Jan Lacan, one of the most respected AI scientists in the world, thinks the current paradigm of AI isn't capable of ever reaching AGI. And for the past three to four years, he has been working on joint embedding predictive architecture that is likely to be the architecture for AGI. And they just dropped a model to finally give us a glimpse of what is actually possible with this new approach. MIT introduced a new self-improvement method that enabled a 1 billion parameter model to almost reach OpenAI 03 on Arc AGI benchmark. 1 billion parameters isn't this small, it is minuscule compared to modern AI models. And to give you a sense of how impactful this method is, before the self-improvement method, the model was consistently scoring zero on ArcAGI. Sam Altman hyped things up again writing a blog post called The Gentle Singularity. We are past the event horizon. Humanity is close to building digital superintelligence. This blog post is really revealing about his vision of the future and where OpenAI goes from here, so we take a look at that as well. And finally, coders are having a rough year. And it seems like it is only getting worse. Nine-year-old kids are vibe coding websites now. We have a lot of new faces here. Welcome and please just don't break anything. Let's get into it. Jan Lacan just introduced VJPA2 a new video model based on joint embedding predictive architecture that is one of the most promising architectures for achieving AGI. You've been hearing about word models as opposed to language models a lot recently. Google, Nvidia, Meta, everyone is switching or better to say upgrading to word models and JEPA is one of the main candidates. I think Jan Lacan himself explains it best. AI is a technological challenge as well as a scientific challenge because we don't know how to build truly intelligent systems yet. It's one of the big scientific questions of our time. What's the universe made of? What is life all about? How does the brain work? Or what is intelligence really? Hi everyone, my name is Yann Lequin. I'm the chief AI scientist at Meta. As humans, we think that language is very important for intelligence. But in fact, it's not the case. Imagine a cube floating in the air in front of you and imagine rotating that cube by 90 degrees. You can sort of picture this in your mind and this has nothing to do with language. Humans and animals navigate the world by building mental models of reality. What if AI could develop this kind of common sense, an ability to make predictions of what's gonna happen in some sort of abstract representation space? We call this concept a world model. Allowing machines to understand the physical world is very different from allowing to understand language. A world model is like an abstract digital twin of reality that an AI can reference to understand the world and predict consequences of its action, and therefore it would be able to plan a course of action to accomplish a given task. It does not need millions of trials to learn something new because the world model provides a fundamental understanding of how the world works. The impact of AI that can reason and plan using world models would be vast. Imagine assistive technology that helps people with visual impairment. AI agents in mixed reality could provide guidance to complex tasks, making education more personalized. Imagine an AI coding agent that can actually understand how a new line of code will change the state of the variable of the program, the effect on the external world in the context of existing code. And of course, world models are essential for autonomous systems like self-driving cars and robots. In fact, we believe world models will usher a new era for robotics, enabling real-world AI agents to help with chores and physical tasks without needing astronomical amounts of robotic training data. This is a very exciting time for AI research and a captivating set of scientific questions in front of us. We want to understand intelligence itself as well as learning reasoning, understanding the physical world, so we can build systems that can help billions in their daily lives. We're excited to announce the release of Video JEPA version 2, the next step in this journey. Stay with us as we continue exploring the possibilities of world models and push the boundaries of AI research. So JEPA is not a video model, it is a broad principle that could be applied to different modalities. And the main idea behind JEPA is this. Almost all AI models of today 
are trained to predict tokens, whether it is a word, a pixel, or an action for the robot. This means although we mainly care about the generalization, the training process results in the AI focusing on predicting the specific details more than general patterns. For example, image models try to predict the exact pixel, or language models memorize the entire internet, word for word, and that means a lot of model capacity is wasted on the details, while it could be used for better abstractions and heuristics, which would ultimately lead to artificial general intelligence. At least that's the best guess right now. Jepa is designed from the bottom up to avoid predicting details while developing abstract representations. And vJepa2 is the latest implementation of this concept. A 1.2 billion parameter model, which is very small, ends up achieving a state-of-the-art visual understanding and prediction enabling zero-shot robot control in new environments. While you've probably seen some crazy maneuvers in robots already, most of them are specifically reinforced in virtual environments for that one task, which makes them especially impressive there, but they are not general. But JEPA is able to perform tasks in new environments with zero practice because it has a general understanding of physics and how things move. This is a glimpse into a future where everything becomes a word model. And regardless of modality, the AI understands everything as concepts and patterns like we do. The exciting and innovative ideas have to go through a lot of iterations and have to prove themselves on multiple scales. And obviously they should be tested on very small models first. Speaking of innovative ideas on smaller models, MIT just released a paper on a self-improving method that shows incredible promise on a tiny model. Self-adapting model or SEAL is a framework that enables LLMs to self-adapt by generating their own fine-tuning data and update directives in test time. This framework helped a 1 billion parameter model that would normally score 0 on ArcAGI achieve the score of 72.5%. Just to put that in perspective, O1 High, a model that is easily a thousand times bigger with reasoning capability, scored about 30% on ARC, and only the newest model from OpenAI, O3, is able to score above 70%. The way this was achieved is very clever, and would probably work on bigger models out of the box. The model generates candidate self-edits, directives on how to update the weights, applies updates, evaluates performance on a downstream task, and uses the resulting rewards to improve the self-edit generation policy. It's fundamentally synthetic data generation and fine-tuning significantly magnified and boosted using reinforcement learning. And it is specifically directed by the AI itself for the task at hand. We have seen too many self-improving AIs recently, and that might be the reason why Sam Altman is saying we have already passed the event horizon. The event horizon is a boundary around a black hole where gravity is so strong that not even light can escape, and everything moves toward the singularity. And for AI, that boundary has been known as the point of true self-improvement. When AI can recursively make itself better, not just on the surface but truly fundamentally reinventing itself. From here on the tools we have already built will help us find further scientific insights and aid us in creating better AI systems. This isn't the same as an AI system completely autonomously updating its own code but nevertheless this is a larval version of recursive self-improvement. I don't think that counts as passing the event horizon for AI. I think the word singularity carries too much intensity for AI-assisted research. But yes, AI is already in the loop, accelerating its own progress. This part is very interesting. There are other self-reinforcing loops at play. The economic value creation has started a flywheel of compounding infrastructure build-out, and robots that can build other robots, and in some sense, data centers that can build other data centers. On the point of economics, a Stripe CEO tweeted a mind-blowing stat about AI. It's hard to definitely attribute the causality, but it seems that AI is starting to influence Stripe's macro figures. Payment volume from customers that signed up for Stripe in 2025 is tracking way ahead of prior years and ahead of even 2020 when the lockdowns triggered a huge surge in signups. Last week was 116% ahead of the same week last year. So yes, AI is definitely in an economic loop that justifies more and more investment and gets better by investment to attract even more money. 
Here is what Sam Altman says about this part. There will be very hard parts, like whole classes of jobs going away. But on the other hand, the world will be getting so much richer, so quickly that we'll be able to seriously entertain new policy ideas we never could before. We probably won't adopt a new social contract all at once, but when we look back in a few decades, the gradual changes will have amounted to something big. I think we can all agree, a few decades from now, if there isn't like a planet-scale catastrophic event, we are going to be sort of a new species. It's just unimaginable what happens when we combine AI, robotics, gene editing, brain interface, etc. That's too far away, but here is a crazy thing that is happening this year. 2025 has been the arrival of agents that can do real cognitive work. Writing computer code will never be the same. 2026 will likely see the arrival of systems that can figure out novel insights. 2027 may see the arrival of robots that can do tasks in the real world. I don't think 2027 is the year of robotics, but on the computer code side, I think we have to start taking it more seriously. Basically, all major labs, OpenAI, Anthropic, Google, Meta, all of them, have said coding is about to be automated, or at least completely overhauled by AI this year. And we can see a glimpse of that by this event, kids vibe coding yeah. websites. My personal view as someone who is fairly technical is that coding won't be completely automated this year or even next year for complex projects. It is way more likely that we see one, more productive software engineers two massively more ambitious software projects, and three basic software needs becoming abundant, like landing pages and simple websites became abundant. Here is how software production will probably advance from Cursor's CEO. Cursor is currently the biggest AI coding platform in the world. We think that over the next five to 10 years, it will be possible to invent a new way to build software that's higher level and more productive. That's just distilled down to defining how you want the software to work, and how you want the software to look. So some people would say that is what we have today. You sort of describe what you want and out it comes. I think that in smaller code bases with smaller groups of people working on a piece of software, that's where you feel the change the most. Already there, we see people kind of stepping up above the code to a higher level of abstraction and just asking uh, essentially agents uh, and AIs to make all the changes for them. In the professional world, I think there's still a ways to go. The vibe coding style of things is definitely not something that we recommend if you're going to have the code stay around for a really long time. I think that there are a bunch of bottlenecks to agents being human level. I think one is context window side of things is definitely uh, an issue where, you know, if you have 10 million lines of code, that's, you know, maybe 100 million tokens. Um, and both having a model that can actually ingest that having it be cost effective and then not just having a model that can physically ingest that into its weights but also one that actually pays attention effectively to that context window and it's not just a code based thing there it's also just a continual learning problem of you know knowing the context of the organization and things that have been tried in the past and who your coworkers are and that uh, problem of having uh, you know a model really continually learn something kind of something that the field i think still doesn't really have a great solution to being able to run the code, being able to look at data dog logs and interface with, with those tools that humans use. There are a lot of known devils that we will have to face and then a lot of unknown devils that we will have to face in you know, uh, the task of making coding agents superhuman. What do you think uh, will be irreplaceable or like sort of the essential pieces of being a software engineer in the future? We think that one thing that will be irreplaceable is taste. So just defining what, what do you actually want to build? People usually think about this when they're thinking about the visual aspects of software. I think it's also, there's a taste component to the non-visual aspects of software too, about how the logic works. Right now, a lot of programming is kind of this human compilation that you're doing where you kind of know what you want, you could tell it to another human being, but you really have to spell it out for the computer. Since we you know, are a tool that's, that's helping you make things happen, helping you build things, that kind of taste for what, what is actually useful for what you want to build, I don't think will ever go away. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.